Life Science, this is our Discovering Cells lesson. Antoine van Leeuwenhoek was the first researcher to see bacteria under a microscope. In his journal, he described how he felt after discovering this new and unfamiliar form of life. He states, For me, no more pleasant sight has met my eye than this of so many thousand of living creatures in one small drop of water. I'm sure that many of you felt similar to that when you looked at your pond water sample. So what are cells? What do you think a mushroom, a tree, a spider, a bird, and you all have in common? All of these are living things, or organisms. Like all organisms, they are made up of cells. Cells form the parts of an organism. They also carry out all of its functions. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things. When you describe the structure of an object, you describe what it is made of and how its parts are put together. For example, the structure of a building depends on the way bricks, steel beams, or other materials are arranged. The structure of living things is determined by the amazing variety of ways its cells are put together. An organism's functions are the processes that enable it to live, grow, and reproduce. Those functions inc include obtaining oxygen, food, and water, and getting rid of wastes. Cells are involved in all three functions. For example, cells in your digestive system absorb food. The food provides your body with energy and materials needed for growth. Cells in your lungs help you get oxygen. Your body's cells work together, keeping you alive. And for each cell to stay alive, it must carry out many of the same functions as the entire organism. Here are some key cell functions that occur in different portions of the cell. What is the cell theory? Until the 1600s, no one knew cells existed because there was no way to see them. Around 1590, the invention of the first microscope allowed people to look at very small objects. A microscope is an instrument that makes small objects look larger. Over the next 200 years, this new technology revealed cells and led to the development of the cell theory. The cell theory is a widely accepted explanation of the relationship between cells and living things. English scientist Robert Hooke built his own microscope and made drawings of what he saw when he looked at dead bark of certain oak trees. Hook never knew the importance of what he saw. A few years later, Dutch businessman Antoine van Leeuwenhoek was the first to see living cells through the microscope. In 1665, Robert Hook used his microscope to observe a thin slice of cork. Cork the bark of the cork oak tree is made up of cells that are no longer alive. To Hook, the empty spaces in the cork looked like tiny rectangular rooms. Therefore, Hook called the empty spaces cells, which means small rooms. Van, Van Leeuwenhoek built microscopes in his spare time. Around 1674, he looked at drops of lake water. He looked at scrapings from teeth and gums. And he also looked at water from rain gutters. Leeuwenhoek was surprised to find a variety of one-celled organisms. He noted that many of them whirled, popped, or shot through water very fast. He called these moving organisms animicules, meaning little animals. Schleden, Schwann, and Virchow. In 1838, using his own research and the research of others, Matthias Schleden concluded that all plants are made of cells. 
A year later, Theodore Schwann reached the same conclusion about animals. In 1855, Rudolf Virchow proposed that new cells are formed only from cells that are already existing. All cells come from other cells, wrote Virchow. So what the cell theory says? The cell, cell theory states the following. All living things are composed of cells. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things, and all cells are produced from other cells. Living things differ greatly from one another, but all are made of cells. The cell theory holds true for all living things, no matter how big or small. Because cells are common to all living things, cells can provide clues about the functions that living things perform. And because all cells come from other cells, scientists can study cells and learn how growth and reproduction occur. How do microscopes work? The cell theory could not have been developed without microscopes. Some microscopes focus light through lenses to produce a magnified image, and other microscopes use beams of electrons. Both light microscopes and electron microscopes do the same job in different ways. For a microscope to be useful, it must combine two important properties, magnification and resolution. Have you ever looked at something through a spilled drop of water? If so, did the object appear larger? Magnification is the condition of things appearing larger than they are. Looking through a magnifying lens, has the same result. A magnifying glass consists of a convex lens which has a center that is thicker than its edge. When light passes through a convex lens and into your eye, the image you see is magnified. Magnification changes how you can see objects and reveals details you may not have known were there. Magnification with a compound microscope. This type of instrument, called a compound microscope, magnifies the image using two lenses at once. One lens is fixed in the eyepiece. A second lens is cho chosen from a group of two or three lenses on the revolving nose piece. Each of these lenses has a different magnifying power. By turning the nose piece, you can select the lens you want. A glass slide on the stage holds the object to be viewed. A compound microscope can magnify an object more than a single lens can. Light from a lamp or reflecting off a mirror passes through the object on the slide. The lower lens and then the lens on the eye, eyepiece. The total magnification of the object equals the magnification of the two lenses multiplied together. So for example, suppose the lower lens magnifies the object ten times and the eyepiece lens also magnifies the object 10 times. The total magnification of the microscope is 10 times 10, or 100 times, which is written as 100x. Measuring microscopic objects. When you see objects through a microscope, they look larger than they really are. So how do you know their true size? One way is to use a metric ruler to measure the size of the circular field in millimeters as you see it through the microscope. Then you can estimate the size of the object you see by comparing it to the width of the field. So you see here in this picture where it's magnified at 40x, so we can see each of the millimeter lines, any object we could then estimate its size. In this case, the field of view is one, two, three, four, five millimeters from one end to the other, we can use that in our measurement. Resolution. To create a useful image, a microscope must help you see details of the object's structure clearly. The degree to which two separate structures that are close together can be distinguished is called resolution. Better resolution shows more details. For example, the 
colors of a newspaper photograph may appear to your eye to be solid patches of color. However, if you look at them through a microscope, you will see individual dots. You see the dots not only because they are magnified, but also because the microscope improves resolution. In general, for light microscopes, resolution improves as magnification increases. The electron microscope. The microscopes used by Hook, Leeuwenhoek, and other early researchers were all light microscopes. Since the 1930s, scientists have developed several types of electron microscopes. Electron microscopes use a beam of electrons instead of light to produce a magnified image. Remember, electron, electrons are tiny particles that are smaller than atoms. By using electron microscopes, scientists can obtain pictures of objects that are too small to be seen with light microscopes. Electron microscopes allow higher magnification and better resolution than light microscopes. Yo, yo, yo! Welcome! I'm Robert Hook, Hook and the Hizzy. Oh, come right this way. My name is Robert Hook, and this is what I love. Oh, come right this way. Let me show you some things I've got in here. This is my bear. His name is Reginald. Let's see here. This is my skillet. Oh, these some pillows I like to just lounge around in sometimes. Okay, as you can see, it's very cozy. I like to sit here and think about how far I've come since I was the curator of experiments in the uh, Royal Society. Well, I don't know if you know what the Royal Society is. It's just a group of me and my science peeps and we get together and we, we think about and we talk about all kinds of science stuff. It's really cool. Uh, and as you can see, uh, I've got lots of my experiments and my discoveries displayed around. <laughs> I used to just start with, with nothing. I used to have nothing. And I've got something over here that's really cool. No one's ever seen it before. It's called a pocket watch. <laughs> What I mean is there's a new twist for the pocket watch. I've put in springs and spiral springs instead of a pendulum. I like to call it a circular pendulum. It's the first of its kind. You gotta check this out. This is one of my favorite things. This is a lobster larva aquarium. Inside here, I've got little crustaceans that I like to take out and look under the lens, and it's really cool because you can see the insides right through them. It's really wicked. I'm the first person to ever do that, by the way. It's really cool. Oh, they don't taste as good here as they do later, if you know what I mean. Whenever I have a dispute with Sir Isaac Newton, I come right here. You know, he gets credit for everything. Just to get the record straight, I was right there with him whenever we would study about gravitation and the planets. I tell you what, the only other thing that really bugs me about him is he destroyed the only portrait ever made of me. Could you imagine that? This is what I look like. If you Wikipedia me and you see all those pictures, that's not what I look like. This is what I look like right here. See what? But enough about this guy. These are buildings that I designed after London got destroyed by a great fire. Check it. Yeah, I'm an architect too, baby. What? <laughs> oh, and over here is my life. This is Macrographia. It's a book that I published with all my drawings and my engravings. Let me show you a picture here. It's pretty cool. This is a flea. I've also got lots of detailed explanations of all my drawings too. And as you can see, it's got jointed scales. No one's ever seen that before. It's wicked, isn't it? I can it? pretty much get specimens anywhere. I... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I never stop an opportunity for getting a specimen, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll look at him later. I also put a lot of commentary in there of everything that I've drawn. And actually, one of my best friends, Pepys, says that this is the most ingenious book he's ever read. And he's read a lot of books. He's a scientist. So what? What? Oh, this? That's just my chef. It's cool. She's, it's around lunchtime. So, so for sandwiches? You want some sandwiches? Anyone? No? OK. Well, we'll be there in a minute. I'm busy, Mom. Um, chef? It's cool. 
But fine, I've got some other drawings too that I want to show you too. Here, look it. That's a picture of my microscope. Berlinga, which is right here. Microscopes were only invented recently. So I decided that I'd make my own microscope. Check it. <laughs> Handcrafted, leather, gold. I like gold. <laughs> and I was sitting right here. I looked at this cork and I looked real, real close and I noticed that there were little rooms in there. And I thought to myself, well, the monks live in little rooms and they call them cells. So when I did my drawing here, I put in little cells. So when you think cells, you think Robert Hook. Robert Hook. Not Isaac Newton, forget about him, okay? Man, isn't it amazing that the more you look in these microscopes, the tinier and tinier you can see things. There's a whole world out there that I got to see first. Well, almost first. A whole world big and small. Robbie! Huh? Did you your room? Well, I've got lots of work to do anyway. I'm going to work on this pocket watch, and then next time, <laughs> I'll see you right back here. Oh, and one other thing. At the Royal Society, we have a saying. Nullius in verba. You know what that means? It means take nobody's word for it, right? You have to do your own scientific fact with scientific experiments. All right, hook out. <laughs> and as always, we encourage you to tu im mundum nunquam explorare quiescitum, or never stop exploring your world, no matter how microscopic it is. Now this is where I keep some of my special specimens, some things that no one has ever seen before. Okay. What are you doing? Nothing, Mom. Mom, it's my room. <laughs>